Steve Dotto here. Thanks for joining me today. Actually, today, this is the first demo that I'm shooting with my new lighting setup. So I hope that everybody likes the, the color of Steve a little bit better today. I hope I look a little bit better. Uh, but we have a very serious topic to discuss today. One of my favorite topics dealing with email overload. Anybody who follows this channel knows that I have a real thing about the productivity lost and the stress gained from not having control of our email. And today we're going to talk about that, not from a perspective of technology. We've looked at a lot of the different pieces of technology in the past, but today I wanted to spend a little bit of time and chat with you about what we can do in our email and how we address it and how we actually manage it uh, procedurally in order to a, reduce the amount of email overload and the amount of stress, but B, also to increase the uh, chance that an email will properly be acted on, that it will, it will become an asset to the conversation, to the project as we move ahead and not become an impediment to others and to ourselves. So the first thing that I want to talk about is those darned addressing fields. Obviously, two, CC and BCC are there for a reason and they all have their place. But using them properly is a very important thing. So number one is if you are the primary recipient of an email in the to field, you have a responsibility to act on that email. Now, if you are CC'd in an email, you have no responsibility to respond whatsoever. You only have the responsibility to audit it, see exactly what's happening, and then and then uh, and then just basically just audit it. If you're in the BCC field, a you should first of all question why you're in BCC. If it's interoffice communication and somebody is basically copying you so that nobody else knows that you're aware, well, that carries all sorts of extra social dilemma, doesn't it? So I think. Personally, that's a very bad idea. Now, we all use BCC. I use it with my mail lists when I'm sending out to a small group of people who don't really, that are, say, involved in a course, and I don't really want to share everybody's email address with everybody else. That's the purpose of BCC, not to be nefarious and to hide the fact that you're telling your boss or you're telling a coworker, including them in a conversation so they can be a voyeur in that conversation. So be very careful about how you use that. It could come back to haunt you. Now, as I mentioned, these the two and the CC fields are really your responsibility to respond. But you can also make sure that you pay attention to it as you're addressing an email. Don't send uh, it, people in the to address if they don't need to respond, if they don't have to be in, in, included. Send it to the primary person and then CC everybody else so that they don't feel a responsibility to reply. And when you get an email that you're not, you have no responsibility to reply to, if you're in the CC field, don't just get a send back a comment, got it, okay, thanks. You, no need to be polite. That just adds to the volume of email in everybody's inbox. So you can just dispense with that immediately. The next thing I want to talk about is the subject field, which is the most powerful tool we have as far as making sure that email is properly processed and handled. Now, I rely for a lot of my uh, a lot of my thoughts on email uh, on a woman named Carol Sutherland. She teaches uh, courses on email management and productivity and, and team management here in Vancouver. I'm going to have a link to her site at Sutherland Consulting. But she did a series of uh, seminars with me where she taught people about developing a uh, an email charter within the company. And a lot of what I'm saying today, I'm just parroting the things that Carol taught me around how we manage email uh, within, with, especially within an enterprise and within, within, within a group. So uh, if you want to go straight to the source, I will have links to Carol's information uh, as we go along. But for now, let me paraphrase what she says is about subject matter, because this is really important. If people have, if you're expecting somebody to act on an email, put it in the subject line. She recommends you put it right at the front of the subject. I don't care if you put it at the front of the subject or at the end of the subject, but if, if I'm expecting you to do something and I'm writing an email to you, if I put action required, required right there at the front of the email, you know that action is required, whether it's at the front or at the back. And if I put by Thursday or by a date, then you know even more that you have a responsibility to do that. And if you see this in your inbox, you can't ignore this. You are gonna recognize the fact that you have a responsibility to act and to react to the email. And this clarity, this not having people infer from the subject matter, but giving them clear directions and clear instructions in the subject line is a great method for increasing your venture's productivity. 
Then let's talk about the actual body of the email itself. Carol recommends if it's a long email, if it's more than a paragraph or two, to summarize exactly what's happening in the very first paragraph, in the first few lines. Because especially if you've CC'd a lot of people, they're able to then read the summary. They don't have to waste time on the body. So that's a good, that's a good practice as well. Additionally, if there is action required, make sure that the last thing you say in the email is the action which is required. State it clearly and don't be nebulous about it. Don't say, you know, what do you think? Is this a good idea? Thoughts? Question mark. Thoughts? Question mark is a terrible way to end an email because if I'm reading that email, I think that you want something back from me and now I'm noodling trying to figure out exactly what my thoughts are on it. Instead, you can say, Steve, can you please reply to this person by this date with this information and let me know that you've done that? Very clear instructions. Then I know exactly what I have to do and I can proceed. This kind of clarity, this kind of decisiveness is a real benefit to moving the ball further downfield in any project that you're working on. So allow me to summarize some best practices you might decide to participate in if you want to improve the communication value of the email going, into, going out from your desktop. Number one, only address email in the to field to people who have to respond. Be clear about what the response you expect is. If it's for information only, type for information only. If they need to reply to you by a certain date, say action required by a certain date. Be clear and concise about what you expect from an email right in the subject line. In the CC field, only copy people who should be auditing and not the cover your ass emails that so many people send that, that basically make it look like you're busy. Don't do that. Thirdly, as far as the BCC field, use that sparingly and don't use it to kind of cloak activities so that people can voyeuristically view email. In the body of the email itself, if it's a long email, summarize it in the first paragraph so that people who are just auditing the email can get on with their day more quickly. And at the end of your email, make sure that you are clear about what action you expect from the email and don't be airy-fairy, don't say thoughts or any of those sorts of things. If you start to act with your email this way, perhaps others in your organization will follow suit and your life will become easier as well as people start to send you clear instructions. But regardless, you're going to benefit because you are going to be clear and decisive and you're going to take a real leadership position in every communication that you embark in. And if you are a in an organization that is thinking about this system-wide, find somebody like Carol Sutherland who comes in, takes a look at your email system within your entire venture, and then gives you a program that teaches everybody how to get on the same page and handle email on a, in the same way, which just basically moves the whole enterprise ahead that much more effectively. I hope you found this video today to be effective use of your time. Please subscribe to our channel. You know we are on a journey to 100,000 subscribers and you are an integral part of that. I appreciate you subscribing. Plus, you get the benefit of seeing our videos as soon as they're released when you subscribe. I'm Steve Dotto. Thanks for spending time with me today.